Hey, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're playing a game called Avery Attorney. Now in this game, you are a bird lawyer, if that makes sense, hence the name Avery Attorney. But I've seen this game on Steam. It looked really fun. The reviews were really good for it. And to be honest, it looked like something I would enjoy playing and something I think you guys will enjoy as well. It's a little bit out there. You know, you're a bird lawyer, so it's kind of weird. If you guys want a better description of the game, that'll be in the description down below. With that said, let's go ahead and do a new game. Here we go. Now, I've never played this, so I don't really know what to expect here. So what's happening? Hopefully, it's not just a long movie. January 1st, 1848, the Chateau Reign of something something. Oh, what the hell? How's it just going to start like that? Is that Monsieur Grenouille? Dame Catherine, what have you done? Oh no, what happened? Act 1, A Cat with Claws. Hmm. It's midday already? Where on earth is that feather head? Well, well, well. Look who finally decided to get up. Haven't you heard what they say about the early bird, Falcon? <laughs> uh, too early for worms. Past the Cabernet Sauvignon. I hope that's how you say that. It looks like I'm going to mispronounce a lot of words in this game. Sparrowson. There'll be time for that later. We've got some business to handle first. Falcon. Business? Oh, what was that? Can I click on it? Oh, well, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't get to read what it said. It's probably just more junk mail. Go ahead, Sparrowson. You may have the honors. All right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Dear Monsieur Falcon, I am writing to you today because my daughter, Dane Caterline, has been arrested for a crime she did not commit. She is being held at La Conciergerie? La Con Let's just say Concierge prison on the charge of murder, nonetheless. Her trial starts in three days' time. I would be greatly in your debt if you would offer her your legal aid. Your sincere, yours sincerely, Signor Poipatoire Damineau of the Damineau Estate. Uh, well, this is quite something, I know. Your first uh, serious client in months. Not just that, the Damineau Estate? I don't, I don't know how to say it. Let's just call it the D Estate, right? The D Estate is well known for its exuberant wealth. Even if we cannot do much for Dame Catherine. His lordship would still reward us handsomely for our efforts. Wow, so I suppose you intend on defending Dame Caroline in court? Uh, of course. Why not? Of course. It would be foolish to let such a good opportunity slip through our feathers. <laughs> Grab your coat, Sparrowson. We're going to find our kitty client at the Le Concierge. Excellent. Uh, my derriere was getting tired from all this sitting around. Oh, but I f better file away Signor Demon's letter first. One moment, Falcon. Uh, Pretro's letter has been added to your evidence folder. Nice. You may access the evidence folder at any time by clicking on the suitcase symbol. Ah, so I'm going to have to use evidence in court. Falcon, ah, nearly forgot my wallet. I wouldn't want to lose that too. Again, I recall you losing it at the New Year's party and at Christmas. Yes, all right, no need to make a list. Falcon has picked up his wallet. You may see how much money he is carrying at any time by clicking on the wallet symbol. Okay, let's move. Am I going to have to buy stuff as well? I don't see my wallet over here. I was going to click on it. Welcome to the map screen. From here, you can travel to any listed area by clicking on the location by clicking on a location name or a location note areas marked with clock symbol will take a whole day to visit areas with no symbol can be visited freely hmm okay let's go to the lake concierge for centuries the infamous concierge prison has detained the accused and the condemned alike okay let's go all right I, i'm, I'm kind of into this game I, i'm kind of feeling it it's a little bit weird it's a little bit off but it looks fun 
Falcon and Sparrowson step into the stone-cold foyer under the concierge prison. Sullen-faced guards and visitors linger beneath the medieval archways. Ah, the concierge. They say this is the finest prison of France. The outer walls are impenetrable, the cells are spotless, the guards are well-mannered. What do you want, Quark? Uh, good day, monsieur. I am here to see Dame Catherine de Miao. I am due to represent her in court. Oh, you're her lawyer, huh? Fine, fine, follow me. What are you waiting for? Keep up. Catterline, and it's an actual cat. That's a very good pun. Sigh. Catterline, and <laughs> she's a cat. Uh, my papa hasn't forgotten about me, has he? Dame Catherine Jamil, I presume? You've arrived. The fantastic lawyer, Monsieur Falcon, and his petite assistant, Sparrowson. My lady is knowledgeable. Don't, don't talk like that, Sparrowson. Sorry. My papa told me he would hire the best lawyers in town. Falcon, I'm flattered. But they weren't available at such short notice, so he hired the first people in the address dictionary. That's messed up, dude. That's not cool, Catalina. What you doing that for? I'm here to help you. She's over here ripping on us? Like, we're not the best lawyers ever? Come on, now. Oh, you see, Falcon, I told you listening under... I told you listing under Avery attorney would pay off. Let's get down to business. Dame Claroline, could you fill us in on some of the details? Your father's letter was a little brief. I can do my best. What is it you wanted to know? Hmm, okay, now we get to ask questions. What happened on the night of the murder? Who was there that evening? Did you see anything suspicious? Let's start with, did you see anything suspicious? Dame Catalina, did you see anything suspicious that evening? Suspicious? Question mark. Like, um, maybe a guy lurking in the shadows, uh, or, uh, a bloody murder weapon? <laughs> Mr. Falcon, I do believe you are looking for an easy answer. You got me. I did not see anything, I'm afraid. That evening was very normal. The food was delicious. The conversation was boring. I was, it was all over, it was all very ordinary until the incident. I see. Sparrowson, wait, Falcon, you missed something of huge importance. I did? Dame Catalina, you said the food was delicious? But you didn't say what food it was. Oh. You and your damn stomach. Let me see. We had poached red herring to start garnished with garlic butter. Go on. Ooh, that sound is good. Then a marbled steak served perfect bloody rare. Nice. Glorious. Falcon, write this down. What? That can't possibly be relevant to the case. Write it all down, please. For me. Fine, fine. Red herring has been added to your evidence folder. Bloody rare steak has been added to your evidence folder. Sparrowson, remind me not to let you talk to the clients on an empty stomach. Come to think of it, I did find it a little strange that they weren't given any cutlery. No cutlery? Even for the steak? Nope. You would think that the great baron of Chateau Sinrare would have gorgeous silverware, but there was none to be seen. This is a little peculiar. It is a little peculiar. Did they cut his stomach open to get the food out? Maybe? I don't know. Was, was there anything else you wanted to know, Monsieur Falcon? Uh, who was there that evening? Dame Catalina, who attended the banquet that evening? Well, there was me and my pa, my dearest mama couldn't make it, and there was the Baron Reglou, uh, who hosted the dinner, and his housemaid, Kowleen, I think she was called. Of course, there was, uh, Monsieur Greenwee, well, until, you know, he died. <laughs> And there was Monsieur Robito di Robinio, the man with the camera, but he was only there for a little while. Hmm. I think that was all. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? What happened the night of the murder? What exactly happened the night of the murder? 
Oh, let me think. It was Friday evening. Me and my pa had arrived at Chateau Sinrare, the home of the great Baron Rogili. My papa spent all evening talking with Monsieur Greenwee uh, about the Baron, uh, about the Baron, and the Baron about business stuff. Holy heck, I cannot read business stuff? Question mark. Well, the three of them own a railway company together. Oh, that's interesting. The only reason you'd murder someone is over money, right? Money or jealousy? I, my bet is on money. So, all through dinner, they were talking about the company shares and investments, but I really didn't understand most of it. But after dinner, this man with a camera took our photograph. That was a lot more fun. Sorry, man with the what? Took your what? Camera. It's a very new gadget. A new gadget? Look at that big old camera. A tiny bug sits in a box with a tiny paintbrush and paints your picture very fast. That is not how a camera works, lady. In 10 minutes, poof, you got a perfect picture. Wow, technology is amazing. Quiet, Sparrowson. Uh, I don't think the lady's explanation is right, Sparrowson. I don't think her explanation is right either. So, let me believe. Still, the camera sounds like a very special device. I'll make a note of it. Camera has been added to your evidence folder. Please continue, Dame Caterline. So, after we had the photograph, I went to the gardens to get some air... And that's when I found the body of Monsieur Greenway. He was all ripped open. The housemaid saw me standing over Froggy Monsieur and called for help. And then the police arrived. Before I could say anything, I ended up here. It was such a blur. It must have been terrifying. It wasn't so bad. My pa taught me how to be a brave cat. Was there something else you wanted to ask, Monsieur Falcon? Falcon. No, I think that will be all. Sparrowson, so what's the plan now, Falcon? The way I see it is we have two tasks. We ha we should head to Chateau Chandrere and search the scene uh, and try to see the scene of the murder for ourselves. And we should try to track down this supposed photographer, Monsieur Robert de Robino. Two days for two tasks. Seems do do doable. Um, but we should... Yeah, we but we should get head back all right it's not me the game is messed up i can't it's not that i can't read it's that the game is messed up but we should get head back and get some rest first yeah that doesn't make sense we have a lot of work ahead of us wait monsieur falcon before you go you do believe my story don't you mm, i believe in justice Dame Kathleen, I believe that a fair trial can draw the truth from any situation. I believe in justice. That's good to hear? You're not wrong, Falcon, but that's not what the lady needed to hear. You might want to work on being less of a more... You might want to work on being less of a, how to put it, Phyllis de Pute. What's that mean? What's that mean? I'm looking that up. I'm looking that up. I'm going to let you guys know what it means. How do I spell it? Phyllis de Pute. I'll let you guys look it up for yourself. <laughs> uh, if serving justice makes me a Phyllis de Pute, then I'll wear what uh, title? I'll wear that title proudly. <laughs> Dame Catalina, Monsieur Greenway, Baron Roger, these names are all getting a bit confusing, aren't they? Not particularly. Well, it is for me. I'm going to start compelling a face book so that I can keep track of who everyone is. A what? A face book. It's a collection of people's names, pictures, and descriptions in one easy-to-carry catalog. I think I'd understand. The name could use a little work, though. Sparrowson has started compiling a face book. You can access a list of people you have met in at any time by clicking the book symbol. Let's make a move. All right. Looks like we're going somewhere. Okay. A new day. The game saves automatically at the start of each new day. All right. Let's go ahead and head over to Chateau Sinrare. Let's go check the 
but you can also make a quick save at any time by selecting save and quit from the pause menu. You can access the pause menu by clicking on the cog symbol in the upper left hand corner or by pressing the escape key. Got it. All right, let's go to this way, Chateau Siri, because that way we could look at the crime scene and then we should be good. Hopefully, maybe. That's my theory. Um, Falcon and Sparrowson enter the courtyard outside Chateau Srini. People with dirty clothes and grunt faces linger around the building shadows. Uh-oh, who are you? Excuse me, messieurs. What's her name? Sustani? I don't know what her name is. I don't mean to be a pain, but my little girl and I are sick and starving, see? Cough, cough. I don't suppose you'd happen to have some spare change. Uh, you have 20 francs in your wallet. What will you do? Um, here, you, here you go. Here you go. Stay safe, madam. Oh, wow. Bless you, monsieur. Bless you. That was pretty generous of you, Falcon. Times are tough. Making sure a mother and child can make it through the last of winter is the least I can do. But what am I doing standing here moral moralizing? Come on, Sparrowson, we've got business to attend to. I'm going to need money, aren't I? I? I have a feeling I shouldn't have, I should just let that stupid little kid starve. Falcon and Sparrowson step into the pristine wood paneled foyer of Chateau Saint Rare. Oh, look at this place. Baron Reglu must be loaded more than loaded when it comes to lucrative investments the baron is a legend factories chocolate shops hotels railroads the baron owns a little bit of everything this side of the scene is he here right now yes he's the smug looking chap with the impressive mane but we must approach a man of his stature with tact and finesse oh jesus christ that scared me hey baron we like a word How's that? Sparrowson, you have the finesse of an inbred warthog. You can thank me later. I think I got his attention. Oh, you're a tiger. That's cool. Did you? Did I hear my name? Great Baron Reglu, property owner extraordinaire, at your service. Roar, 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 yell. Is his name Rorgul? Rorgul? Like a lion because it roars? And who might you fellows be? More investigators? Yep, we're policemen. No, we're attorneys. Not quite. I'm a private attorney, J.J. Falcon. And this is my associate, Sparrowson. Lorries, eh? You know you aren't the first to have passed through here today. Oh? Yes, yes. This jumpy, twitchy fellow came by this morning. Asked a bunch of questions and then hopped away before he heard the answers most curious hmm do you know who he was sparrowson perhaps i have a hutch sorry hunch we'll be seeing him at the trial a friend of yours something like that so what may i do for you messieurs um we're doing some research on monsieur greenwee monsieur uh, monsieur I don't know. The frog who was killed on Friday evening. Of course, of course. Such a tragedy. He was a good friend and a loyal business partner. I suppose you will be wanting to see the crime scene for yourself? Actually, yes. That would be fantastic. Well, be my guest. Uh, you will find the garden where the murder occurred through the back doors. You may also be interested in the lounge on the second floor, third door to the right. That would be where we gathered for a group photograph prior to the incident. Unfortunate incident. I almost had it, dude. I almost had it. Oh, can we see the finished photograph? I am afraid not. It is to my understanding that the photograph must be developed before it can be viewed. It's a slow process. My own copy of the photograph is to be delivered in three days time. That's no good to us. The trial may be over by then. Nonetheless, we appreciate your hospitality. Thank you, Baron. It's no trouble at all. I'll be here to see you out when you are done with your investigations. So, where shall we go first? Hmm. Let's investigate the gar lounge. Let's investigate the lounge first. Oh, who the hell are you? Is that a giraffe? 
Excuse me, miss. Are you a giraffe? Second floor. Um, third door on the right. This must be the room where the photograph was taken. Psst. Hey, Falcon. Did you see that? See what? The housemaid totally just did something shifty. Shifty? I think she just pocketed something from the drawer. You should totally call her out on it. Excuse me, Mademoiselle. Ah? Uh -huh. Yes, are you two policemen? No, no, we're private attorneys. My name's J.J. Falcon, and I'm Sparrowson. Oh, how rude of me. My name is Coilene Duhat. So, uh, what can I help you, messieurs, with today? We're investigating the murder that took place last week. Do you mind if we ask you a couple of questions? That's fine. Let me just grab a chair. Okay. Uh, that's better. What is it you wanted to ask? Hmm. Is there something we should know? Is this where the photograph was taken? We're looking for the room where the photograph was taken prior to the incident. Would you happen to know whether this, this is the right room? Oh yes, you're in the right place. I saw the photograph photography session for myself. Let's see. The cameraman was standing just about where you're standing, actually, uh, Monsieur Falcon. And where was the camera pointed? Right at the clock above the mantel place. The Baron insists on using that very location. Hmm. Now that I'm looking at it, something isn't right about that clock. I know, the painting on it is totally clashes with the decor. I was thinking <laughs> along more obvious lines. The clock has no hands. Oh. Oh, that clock has never had hands in all the years I've worked here. I think Baron Reglu just keeps it around as a conversation piece. Well, we're, converse we're conversing about it, so I guess it's working. It's a peculiar detail, though. I'll make note of it. Missing clock hands have been added to your evidence folder. Is there something else you wanted to ask? Is there something we should know? You were a little nervous when we came in. Uh, you thought we were police officers. Is there something we ought to know? Anything uh, you need to confess? No, no, I suppose I'm just a little nervous after all the drama last week. Mm, it's pressure. I'm pressuring her. Are you sure there isn't anything you're hiding? It's okay to tell us. We're defense attorneys. That means we help people get away with criminal acts. Right, and... Wait, what? No, that's not our accurate job description, Sparrowson. It isn't? Oh, what do we do then? I'll tell you later. <laughs> Honestly, messieurs, I have nothing to hide. Was there something else you wanted to ask? That's all. No further questions. Thank you, mademoiselle. You've been a huge help. I. It's no problem, Monsieur. Uh, actually, there is something. Uh-oh. I know you two saw me stealing as you came in. I appreciate that you didn't give me the third degree about it. You see, I'm trying to save up f to follow my dreams. And, well, never mind. I'm rambling. It's not a problem, man, as well. To be honest, we have a much larger crime to worry about. Although I should probably ask, I don't suppose you've been stealing anything else. Silverware, perhaps? Ah, uh, you know about that? Yes, I suppose that was me. I, it started with a couple of teaspoons. I didn't think the Baron would miss those. But, uh, well, yeah, I suppose the habit got a little away from me. That's one mystery solved, at least. Missing silverware has been added to your evidence folder. If no one had the evidence folder, how did they cut the frog open? I would appreciate it if you didn't tell the Baron he's been really kind and it would uh, I would hate to break his trust. I see. So where to uh, next, Big Bird? Uh, select a room to investigate. Let's investigate the main hall. I'm actually enjoying this game. This is not too bad. Uh, Roar Ghoul. Did you, did you messieurs have a good look around? I trust everything was in order. Sparrowson. Actually, we haven't visited the garden yet. We definitely need to do that. Uh, select room. Okay, I guess we're investigating the garden. Dame Cataline said that she found uh, Nisu Greenwee on the stairs by the fountain. So this must be the very spot where the murder took place. Hey Falcon, do the crime scene investigation thing. The crime scene investigation thing? Question mark. Yeah, you know, that thing where you get all eagle-eyed eagle and I analyze every object in excruciating detail. You mean search for evidence? Yeah, do that. That's not a bad suggestion. It wouldn't be the first time the Parison P 
police had missed something right under their noses. Uh, in investigation mode, you are free to examine the scenery of the room. Click on an item of interest and Falcon will examine it in closer detail. When you have enough or when you can find nothing else to examine, click on the X at the top right hand corner. Okay, I see the X. It's big. It's way up there. Select an area to examine. Okay. The fountain is finely crafted. It's solid. Carved in marble. That can't have been cheap. I see nothing but water in the bottom of the lower basin. It's a shame we can't see inside the upper basin from here. That would be a perfect place to quickly stash a murder weapon. That's actually not a terrible line of reasoning. We ought to wade in to take a closer look, just to be sure. Yeah, I suppose we should. Oh, I apologize. I wasn't being direct enough. When I s What I meant to say was, Sparrowson, go wade in the fountain and take a closer look inside the upper basin. Me? No way. Uh, if you want to go waiting, do it yourself. I'm a respectable lawyer. You can't expect me to roll up my trousers and paddle around the fountain like a duck in a lake. Uh, well, yeah, you don't pay me enough to justify getting my sweat threads wet. Look, there's only one reasonable way to settle this. We'll flip a coin. We'll flip for it. Flip for it. Okay, we got a coin. Yep, I'll flip this one front coin. Uh, you call the outcome, get it wrong, and you go for a swim. So what'll be, heads or tails, Napoleon face or plant squiggles? Uh, let's go heads. Put it all on heads, don't let me down, old emperor. Here I go. It's tails, roll up your pants and loons, Falcon, you're going for a swim. Gah, fine, hold my shoes. Falcon really should learn how to spot a... Rigged coin flip. I almost feel bad for cheating. Almost. Ah, you're back. Had a good swim. Look at his hat. He's all dripping wet. Uh, no, I'm a bird, not a fish. But I did find a mysterious item at the basin. It's no murder weapon, though. It's a cigar, isn't it? What is this? It's brown and sticky, and it smells weird. Don't tell me that you picked up a... Very wet cigar, but possibly belonging to Baron Rorgul, correct? Uh, but that shouldn't be too surprising. It is in his house, after all. I'll stash it in the evidence folder, just in case. Hmm, genius. Is there anything else uh, we need to do here? Okay, select an area to examine. Okay, okay, let's go examine this area. A horse statue. This one has a goofy face. That reminds me of a joke. A horse walks into a bar and the barkeep says, Why the long face? Yes, yes, we've all heard that one. What? No. The barkeep says, You've got to stop coming here. You're drinking us under the stable. <laughs> I think it's time to rain in the horse jokes. Get it? Rain in the horse jokes? Uh, select an area to examine. Okay. This one over here. Another beautifully made horse statue. You know, my uncle once had a horse that refused to eat hay. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yep, eventually we realized it was just uh, filling up on our horse d divorce. Uh, terrible. This one. A second area. A finely crafted horse statue. The mane almost looks lifelike. Would you say it behooves you to stroke it? No, no, I wouldn't. All right, select an area to examine. I've examined all the areas. Oh, the stairs. Were, hey, that's where the murder took place. Let's go check out this one. Uh, Baron Regu certainly likes his horse statues. I don't mind the horse statues, but the little Chibru people creep me out. Babies shouldn't be waddling, not attempting saddleless horseback riding. Select an area to examine. All right, I'll examine there. Dry blood on the staircase. This must be where Monsieur... Gr Rinui died. Do you see any bloody footprints? Oh, or maybe a name scrawled in blood, written with the frog's last breath. Wishful thinking. All I'm seeing here is a big sticky puddle. There's nothing to indicate the body was moved or that the frog left a last minute clue. All I can make out from the bloody mess is that Monsieur Greenwe was attacked and killed on the staircase. Select an area to examine. Okay, let me look around. Alright, I don't see anything else, or anywhere else. 
to examine. All right, so let's just hit X. I think we're done here. Good call, but are you sure you don't want to take another dip? We still have time. Don't push your luck. All right, I guess we're going to go to the main hall. Did you, Miss Yu, have a good look around? I trust everything was in order. We had a good look. Thank you, Baron. But we actually have some questions for you. Please, ask away. I have nothing to hide. Um, about your housemaid. About your housemaid. Uh, do haunt? She's a courteous young lady, isn't she? Uh, yep, she was quite helpful. She's a thief. Actually, we feel obligated to tell you that she has something of a thieving habit. I know. You know, of course I know. When the silverware goes missing in a house occupied by two people, it doesn't take a world-class detective to solve the mystery. Then why haven't you informed the police? <coughs> this may surprise you, Monsieur Falcon, but I am actually not a ruthless money-grabbing Borghese. A housemaid steals a hundred francs of silver from me. A mere drop in a bucket for a man of my stature. What of it? I feel no need to ruin the poor girl's life over something so small and petty. I see. I apologize, Baron. I didn't mean to pry. That's quite all right. Did you two want to ask me something else? What happened the night of the murder? Baron Ragu, I'd like to ask you about your activities on the night of the murder. Oh, n ho. Am I in trouble? Not at all. We'll see. Hmm. We'll see. Not at all. Not at all. No, 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 nothing like that. We're just gathering the full picture. I see. Well, let me think. The guests arrive at 5 o'clock, and we all sat down for dinner. It, in this very hall at 6, the part went magnificently. The photographer arrived at 7 o'clock, but it wasn't until 7.30 that we had our picture taken. My housemate discovered the crime scene soon after that. I see. Is there something else I can help you with, monsieur? We'll be leaving. Let me check. Can I select something? What about this? Okay, I can't. I can't select the evidence and question them on it. I, I, I can only use the dialogue options that are available to me. Uh, I think that will be all, Baron. Thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure. Have a delightful day, Messias. Did you get all the information you need, Falcon? I hope so. Don't worry. If everything goes wrong in the trial, we could always just wing it. <laughs> the puns are so terrible. Terrible, just terrible. Let's head back to the office and get some rest. That pun was horrid. A new day. Okay. Alright, I guess we're going to Studio D. Robinio. Ah, uh, so this is a uh, studio of the famous photographer. Shall we knock? Wait, there's a note on the door. <clears throat> the magnificent, marvelous artist... Monsieur Rabito di Robino is currently on an artist expedition. He shall return when his muse sees fit. When his muse sees fit? What does that even mean? I think he means that he is a pretentious bird brain, but in any case, the artist seems to be out. We we shall... What shall we do now? Hmm. Uh, we should go. We should knock anyway. We should knock anyway. All right, I don't see the harm. Falcon. Nope. It doesn't look like he's in Falcon. We should break in. We should... We should break in. <laughs> what? Are you serious? Falcon, maybe. Monsieur J.J. Falcon... I would have thought that a man of justice like yourself would be against such reckless displays of unlawful barbanism. Uh, you're right, I'm sorry, I don't know what came over. It's a brilliant suggestion. Stand back, I'm barging the door down. Oh my god, I love Sparrowson. Wait, just like that, shouldn't we discuss this first? Oh god. Dude, they remind me of Sherlock Holmes, this is so awesome. Oh! Damn, Sparrowson. Uh, what in bird Jesus' name was that? You said you wanted to break in. I thought we can find an open window. I didn't think you would turn into a bird-sized cannonball. Well, now, we're in here. We ought to have the most of it. This place looks quite something. It's very... 
Squonky. I was going to say, I don't know what that word is. Yeah, it's just squonky for talk for squonky. Uh, we don't have time for this. The sound of a door being smashed in the the sound of the door being smashed and could be drawing unwanted attention. We should find anything that maybe help uh, our case and get out. Okay, select an area to examine. Right, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start over here. Hey, Falcon, look. What? It's just an easel. No, no, look what's on the easel. Oh, wow, this must be a copy of the photograph from the evening of the murder. Uh, does anybody have a knife on them? There's no question about it. I see a housemaid, Dame Catherine, and I think Sir Gwendolyn brought me Catherine's father. Uh, what shall we do? Do we just take this? Uh, we should take it. We've come this far. Uh, we may as well borrow it. My fo the photograph has been added to my evidence. Is there anything else we need to do here? Let's examine. Oh, I don't want to examine all these one individual photos. I'll examine the big stuff. A chandelier. You should get one of those for the office. I don't have money for that sort of luxury. Let's examine this. I see paints, inks, and dyes. I'm not quite sure what the clear liquid in this bottle is. I could taste test it. You could, but we don't have time for a hospital visit right now. So let's not. Select an area to examine. I don't think these photographs will have anything to do with it. A picture of a sailing boat on a ship windy day. Let's just go ahead. Okay. Okay. I don't, I don't think there's anything else to examine. Okay. I don't think there's anything else to examine. I think we're done. All right, let's go. Boom. I think we're done snooping. Let's get out of here before we draw further attention to ourselves. Sounds good to me. Uh-oh, Sparrowson. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, mon dieu. What happened to my door? Uh, lie. Some kids did it. Little weasel types. We saw them. Yeah, weasels. <laughs> they were all like, let's break into this art guy's house. And we were like, no, weasels, you can't do that because that would be illegal. <laughs> and then they were like, we chased them off. That's the important thing. Well, thank you, I suppose. Let's make a move. Trial day is approaching fast. Right, let's go. That dude came back at the last minute. A new day. Thursday. Uh, a palace of justice houses the high court, a palace reserved for only the most serious crimes. Hmm. Alright, I've been there. Should we go talk to the photographer? Let's go see AA office. Maybe we could go talk to, like, concierge. Okay, before we go here, let's go see what everywhere else has to offer. Let's see if there's any more dialogue. Jim Falcon, it's child day. Stop messing around. We need to head to the courthouse already. I was just, no, we're going to be late. All right, I guess we have to go to the courthouse. Boom. Falcon and Sparrowson stand inside the marble Protocio of the Palace de Justice, awaiting the opening of the Trial Burn de Grand Instance. Are you nervous, Falcon? Yes, I am. I don't have enough evidence. Of course I'm nervous. We woefully underprepared for this case. Two days? We only had two days to prepare? How are we expected to get anything done in that time frame? Calm your feathers, Falcon. We can do this. Monsieur Falcon, Petit Sparrowson, is there anything you need me to do? No, no. We've got a handle on things. Falcon was just telling me how confident he was feeling about the case. That's wonderful. I just know you two will pull through. Let's move it along, fellas. Ah, I'll be watching from inside. Do your best for me, Monsieur Falcon. We will. Huh. Are we ready? I guess we're ready. Yeah, we're ready. Oh, this must be the judge. Alright, settle down, everyone. Is everybody here? J.J. Falcon, present. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Um, um, Rupert Rabington, uh, present. The ready is... The ready is prosecution, Your Honor. Uh, uh, darn, that's not it. Oh, gosh, where are my notes? Ha, I knew it. Knew what? Rupert and I went to Paris Law School together. 
He was in all of my classes. Oh, was he smart? Pfft, no, he was always scored the second worst marks in the class. I can only assume that he bumbled through the final exams on the luck of his two rabbits feet. Unless he's improved considerably, you might already have this child in the bag. That's good to know. But say, Sparrowson, if Rupert scored the second lowest marks in the class, then who scored the lowest? I choose to exercise the right not to self-incriminate. <laughs> ah, here it is. <clears throat> the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. And the jury are all present? All present and accounted for, Your Honor. Hey, Falcon, I thought you were only six members of the jury for cases like this. Why do I count eight? Hmm, interesting. Oh, those two birds with the funny hats are assures the associate judges. Okay, cool. Got it. Everything seems to be ordered, so let's begin. The court is now in session for the trial of Dame Kathleen Dumas. Prosecution, please call your first newestness to the stand. Oh gosh, uh, are we there already? Oh, okay. Um, I choose to call the officer in charge of the murder investigation, Inspector Voltaire, to the witness stand. Inspector Voltaire, please approach the stand and recite the oath. As you wish, Your Honor, I swear to speak without hatred and without fear to tell the whole truth and not, but nothing but the truth. Monsieur, no, um, Inspector, please state uh, y your name and occupation for the record. My name is Inspector Jean Vlotier. I am a servant of the law, a scourge uh, of the gutter rats that plague the city. I have enforced the law for over 20 years, and I shall continue until I bring the infamous uh, Viridian killer to justice. My path begins 18 years ago. Let's stick to the questions, Inspector. Of course, Your Honor. Oh, great. I was hoping we could have had one of those bumbling, cuddly officers, but instead we're stuck with the lawfully goody two-shoes. I bet this guy would not would turn his own mother if he saw her littering. So, uh, Inspector, is it true you are the lead investigator on this case? Yes, it is. Yes, this... Ah! That is correct. I also among the first to arrive at the scene of the crime. Then perhaps you can walk us through what you witnessed upon your arrival. Absolutely. Just just after 7.30, we were altered... We... We were altered and brought to the scene by the housemaid of Baron Ragru. At the scene of the crime, we found Demain Catherine Dumai. Uh, she was standing over the corpse of Monsieur Greenwe with his blood over her paws. That sounds like the open-handed and shut case, in my humble opinion. No uh, more questions, Your Honor. No more questions? That's it? B -b Bloody paws? Nobody told me that detail. Keep it together, Falcon. You're about to be given the opportunity to cross-examine a witness. That's your opportunity to find flaws in the inspector's testimony. Of course, I know this. You may bring the cross-examination, Mr. Falcon. Cross-examine the witness to find flaws in his testimony. Select a key phrase that you find suspicious and Falcon will press the witness for information. All right, question, or ask the right questions to bring the truth to light. Avoid pressing pointless details. The judge and jury don't like having their time wasted. Select a statement to the question. Mm. At the scene of the crime, sliced open corpse, blood on her paws. Housemaid. Hmm. Alright, let's try blood on her paws. Inspector, you say Damien had blood on her paws. Correct. Blood clung to her fur like guilt to a convict. How much blood was there? How much blood was there as on the lady's paws, Inspector? Enough for it to be clear that she had directed her hands, uh, dirtied her hands on the victim's body. We noticed blood under the suspect's nails, around the fingertips, and even a little around her mouth. Her mouth? How vile. Hmm. The inspector seems pretty definitive. Uh, do you have another question about the blood on Dame Catherine's paws? No. Never mind. I have no more questions about the blood. Falcon, I know it's good to back out when you th think a line of questioning might not go anywhere. But sometimes you have to take a risk. What are you saying? Something about the inspector's blood description doesn't sit right with me. Put pressure on the inspector. Maybe something will come up. Hmm. So, okay. Let me let me do the blood on the paws again. Uh, whose blood was it? 
Whose blood was it? Ha! Huh. What a question. Is... It was Monsieur Green's, of course. How can he be sure? Uh, I object to this line of questioning. Is absurd. There was only one murder victim uh, that night, Falcon. The blood on Jim and Catalina's paws could have only belonged to one person, Monsieur Greenway. Judge, judge, Falcon's trying to delay the trial by asking pointless questions. I'm afraid the prosecution uh, must have a point, Monsieur Falcon. Do you have any reason to suspect that the blood belongs to someone else other than Monsieur Greenway? I do. I do, Your Honor. I actually have more than suspicion. I have evidence that the blood on Demi Qualls, uh had nothing to do with the murder. This is foolish uh, time wasting, uh, Falcon. And the blood on Jimmy and Catalina's paws didn't come from the victim. Then where did the blaws come from? The food. The food. The steak. Steak. There we go. On the evening of the murder, Dame Catalina. Boom. Ate a bloody rare steak. We're the best goddamn lawyer in here. Is this true, Monsieur Rabington? Um, well, um, in the manner of speaking, I suppose steak may have been uh, on the menu. Then, Inspector... Would you acknowledge the possibility that the blood on the, on the lady's paws did not belong to the victim, but to the steak? Well, wait, wait, don't answer that, Inspector. It is a possibility. No! Intriguing. You gained a little favor with the jury. Nice. So, Inspector Voltier, is it possible that you arrested an innocent bystander for simply being a messy eater? Now hold on just one minute, Falcon. You're overlooking something quite crucial. Dame Catalina is an elegant, uh, borgacious kitten. She was no doubt bought with, up with uh, flawless etiquette and a perfect table manners. And the banquet, she would have eaten the steak with a fork in her left hand and a knife in her right, like any other proper life civilized animal. How could you? How could she have possibly gotten blood on her paws with such good manners? Oh, that is a good question, or at least it would be at any ordinary dinner banquet. But as it happened, something was missing from that particular banquet. Something that forced Demi and Catalina to eat with her paws. Silverware. Boom! Dame Catalina was forced to eat steak with her paws because... The silverware of the household had been previously stolen. Stolen? I don't recall any mention of that in the police report we weren't aware of anything missing from Moraglu residence when we performed the initial investigation but as it happens Baragu Ragnan approached us about this very subject last night ah you gained a little favor with the jury this is good what is the meaning of all this bloody steak misplaced silverware inspector was your investigation so lax that you overlooked these basic facts in your initial report Lax, my investigation, judge, I assure you that I am, I must, I assure you, I am the most true investigative officer on the force. Then it is amazing that the Parson police managed to solve any crimes at all. Heh, <laughs> oh dear. Be on your way, inspector, perhaps do a little inspecting for your next case. Dot, 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 fine, so be it, messieurs, until next time. So I'll be seeing him again. Prosecutor, I trust your next witness is ready. Yes, of course, Your Honor. I call upon, um, let's see. Monsieur Rapid, Rapid, the photographer who attended the banquet of the night of the murder. Monsieur Rabin, Rabineau, please approach the stand and recite the oath. Uh-oh. How does it go? I swear to speak without hatred and without fear and tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Uh, it's a little cliche, to be perfectly honest. Could, uh, the witness please introduce himself for the court record? Hmm. As it, as if anybody in the courtroom does not immediately recognize me, I am the great Monsieur Rabinou Rabinino, cutting-edge photographer and visionary. I don't just take people's pictures; I capture their very essence. Je just less something, 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 something. Just you may have seen my work in the hit magazine Le Branchy or C Shoot. I can send you tweets if you like. What on earth is a tweet? Bird to bird communication. Come on, Falcon. It's the 19th century. Get with the times already. Yes, yes. Your works are very unimpressive, Monsieur Rabino. But let's talk. Let's get down to business. Could you tell us your uh, activities? Were <sighs> sorry. Uh, activities were on the night of the murder. Very well. 
I was hired by Baron Ragu to capture the event's evenings. I arrived at 7 in the morning. I pointed my camera and captured the beauty of the banquet in one, in one fantastic photograph. Then I built Baron Ragu and left, like a true artist. And uh, with regards to the photograph itself, who did you photograph? I thought you might mention. I bought a copy so that you could all see it for yourselves. Oh, very good. Let's take a closer look. This is not true. My word, this is an exquisite picture, isn't it? So let's see. Who do we have here? In the middle, we see uh, Baron Ragru, the lion who hosted the event. On the left, we see um, Sugi Abdaman, the father of the uh, defendant, Dame Catalina. And on the right, we see the housemaid, uh, who I suspect may have snuck into the picture uninvited. As you can see, two people are clearly absent from the photo. The first victim is Monsieur Greenway. The second is the defendant, Dame Catalina. Uh, quite suspicious, wouldn't you agree? Just a moment, Mr. Uh, this proves nothing. Uh, so the defendant and the victim were not photographed in, with the others. That doesn't mean that they were in the garden together at that point. Hold your horses, Falcon. I'm not done yet. The prosecution may continue. Behind the photograph, subjects, we see a wall clock with the time set at uh, 7.30. Now, why is that time significant? Well, as Inspector Rotier told us earlier, that was the exact time the murderer took place. Uh-oh. Do you see, Falcon? Every suspect has an alibi at that time of the murder, save for Dame Catalina herself. Hey, Falcon, that photograph doesn't seem right. It looks different from the one we borrowed from Rubrush's studio. I see it, too. Our photograph shows... Uh, Caroline Dunhant, Dame Caroline, and Sigmer Portier. There we go. We got it. But Monsieur Robin's photograph shows Baron Ragu where Dame Caroline should be standing. I, if we assume that uh, the only photograph was taken, then this demonstrates that one of the photographs must have been edited in some way. We should slam the evidence down. Like, bam, inconsistency. The whole courtroom is out of order. Case closed. I can't do that. Well, I suppose you could be a little bit more delicate with your words. No, I mean, I can't do that because our evidence was illegally obtained. If I were to present it, Mr. Robbins would ask how we acquired it and the whole trial would derail. In the worst case scenario, I could lose my legal license and we could be arrested for theft. Oh, well, we don't want that. No, we don't. I should tread lightly. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Very well, the defense may proceed. Hmm. It's a waste of time if you ask me. Photographs are rock-solid evidence. Hold on, I have something. 7 p.m. The clock hands were missing, and I have clock hands as evidence. Boom! There you go, Mr. Robinson. You say that you arrived at 7 o'clock? Uh, give or take a couple of minutes, yes. Uh, how long did it take to set up? How long did it take to set up your camera? It took perhaps 25 minutes to find a shooting location, put together camera editor, put together the camera, and ready the film. So you arrived at 7, and the photograph took place at 7.30, and you spent 25 minutes setting up. That leaves 5 minutes unaccounted for. Falcon, sir, aren't you are suggesting that Mr. Rabin did something um, nefarious in a small window of time? Uh, no, I am not. No, not at all. I'm just trying to piece together the evening's events. Hmm. I spent a little time talking with Baron Raglu when I arrived. That's probably where the rest of the time went. Do you have another question about uh, Rabanero's time of arrival? Yes. Uh, how do you know? How do you know uh, that you arrived at 7? Well, the clock at my house read 6.45 when I left, and the walk to Chateau Simre was around 15 minutes. I don't came to be a false time creeper, but I am professional. I always stick to an appointment. Do you have another question about Robineau's time of arrival? No, I don't. Select another statement about the question. Um, I arrived at 7 p.m. I build of the evening's events in one magnificent photograph. Let's take a look, a closer look at this photograph. Uh, I see a mistake in the photograph. Why is this, I see a mistake in the photograph? Just to clarify, Monsieur, photographs are a direct reflection of reality, are they not? This is correct. The photographic process leaves no room for bias or inaccuracies. 
That is most curious, because I see a mistake. A mistake. Impossible. I just told you, monsieur, the camera is a perfect, unbiased device. The photograph it produces are flawless. Falcon, I'm not seeing any uh, mistakes. Perhaps you can be more specific. Certainly. This one. Click on every other photograph that you believe contains a mistake. The clock. The clock in the photograph. Uh, there is something not right about it. Well, what is... Isn't that convenient? The defense sees something wrong with uh, the key piece of evidence that implicates his clients. Don't give me that cocky tone, Monsieur Rabington. I have evidence that there's something wrong with the clock in that picture. Boom! Missing clock hands. The photograph clearly shows the clock hands pointing at 7 and at 6. That's much is self-evident. Which is most curious because the clock in the lounge of Chateau Serene has no hands. It. It has no hands? The clock is merely a decorative piece, a talking item. Feel free to ask Baron Ragru or his housemaid if you have any doubts. Monsieur Rabineau, how do you explain this dis discrepancy? I, I don't know. There must be some sort of mistake. My camera is flawless. There is no mistake, Miss Yu. Your photograph depicts something that did not exist in the real world. Maybe there was an error in the printing process. An error precisely where the clock hands should be? Please, Miss Yu, don't patronize us. Allow me to offer a more plausible explanation. You, Miss Yu Rabin, edited this, this photograph. Edited? I am no expert, but I suspect that you used paint or ink to carefully put hands upon the clock. It would have been a simple task considering that the clock face was bare. One could even speculate that you specifically chose to include a handless clock in the photograph just to simply simplify the editing process. I... I... Falcon, your reasoning is absurd. Why would the witness do such a thing? Isn't it not obvious? By showing the photograph has taken place at precisely 7.30, it clears all the photograph subjects of suspicion. In other words, Monsieur... Monsieur Rabineau created a perfect alibi. Oh, dude, things are getting interesting. He's freaking out. Of course, this raises further questions. Who is the witness protecting and why? Was Monsieur Rabineau concerned? Uh, Brebed? Threatened? Bribed? Threatened? Enough silence. Let's hear some answers, Monsieur Rabineau. Fine, you've got me. I'm guilty. I did it all. You did it? You're confessing to the murder of Monsieur Greenwee? What? No, no, no. I have no idea who killed the frog. I'm just admitting that I'm guilty of producing fraudulent photographs. I was ordered to make changes to the printed photographs. And yes, that included adding hands to the clock. You were ordered? By whom? I... I dare not say. Monsieur Robineau, I strongly advise that you answer the offense's questions. You have pledged to speak without fear after all. With respect, Judge, I fear his claws more than I fear the punishment of the justice system. I shall name no names. His claws. Could you hear that, Falcon? This is most unfortunate. Monsieur Rabinu, uh, we cannot and shall not tor uh, torture names out of you. We don't live under the ancient regime, after all. A ain and, and I don't know what that said. Uh, but since you have admitted to falsifying evidence, then we cannot keep you on the stand as a witness. Take your leave. You shall be charged with perjury in due course. I can't protest. That's the least I deserve for my failure as an artist. Good day, Monsieur. Intriguing. Boom. I gained a little favor with the jury. So, uh, clock hands were painted on. So what? It doesn't matter. The photograph still depicts Dame Catalina and is absent close to the time of the murder. That's significant. Don't be dense, Monsieur Rabington. Uh, if the photograph is not completely genuine, then it cannot be considered reliable evidence. Why not? It's still a portrayal of the uh, night's events. Because if we accept that one part of the picture was edited, then we must accept the possibility that the other parts were too. It is possible that Dame Catalina was painted out. Even worse, it is possible that another person was painted in. We know that witness was trying to cover for someone, so all the possibilities must be accounted for. So what are you saying, Falcon? That housemaid... Paid off the photographer, or was it Sangu Parma Dumont, perhaps? I don't think so. The housemaid lacks the means or motive, and it wouldn't make sense for Sir Ben Parma to implicate his own daughter. We're surely not suggesting that the honest and beloved Baron 
Rorgul deliberately try to frame uh, Dame Catalina because that would be one of the most outlandish theories yet. The Baron is the pillar of the community. He would never do such a thing. Uh, Monsieur Rabington, I'm not here to throw accusations. That's the job of you, the prosecutor. However, maybe I should offer my opinion. Baron, um, um, it's time for your witness testimony. Yeah. Uh, so would you, so you would think, prosecutor, and yet I see my good reputation getting tarnished by your incompetence. In, 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 incompetence? Indeed. Let us proceed with the witness questioning in that fine with you, judge? Yes, I suppose that's fine. Very well, and I trust that the defense has no objections? No, no objections here. Fantastic. Oh, but before I forget... I pledge to speak without fear and uh, prejudice, etc., etc., etc. Now, prosecutor, ask me what uh, what I missed over the course of the evening. Um, um, okay, Baron Rigel. Um, um, on the night of the um, the initial dinner was uh, mag magnificently uh, went magnificently. When the photographer arrived, Monsieur Greenway left to visit the garden. Dame Catalina followed behind him moments later. Sigrid promised Robin and myself engaged in conversation, so we paid her no mind. After the photograph had left, my housemaid left to go find Monsieur Greenwee and Dame Catalina. That would be when I heard her cry for help. Thank you, Baron. I think we all know the story from there. I would like to cross-examine the witness. Uh, are you doubting my integrity, Garrison? Um, I'm just here to uncover the truth, Baron. Well then, hit me with your best shot. Let's us establish with let us establish with absolute certainty that I, Bergman, am an honest man. The defense may proceed with cross examination. Let's get this fucker. Um, select a statement to question. Dinner went magnificently. When the photograph arrived, the garden. Uh, Monsieur Greenway, housemaid. My housemaid discovered the pair. This is true. We know this. The garden. This is true. I'm going to go with dinner. But remember, I would like to ask you about the dinner you served that evening. Very well. Ask away. Regarding your stolen cutlery. Regarding the red herring. Regarding the red herring. Now, about this red herring. Yes, what about it? I'm not sure, but I feel of its vital importance to the case. Falcon, I just want to clarify that you... Saying you wish to pursue the red herring. Yes, I wish to pursue the word. No, I am not an idiot. No, on second thought, I suspect the red herring may be a diversion. Uh, I'll leave it be for now. That's a good call. The joke was starting to wear thin. Do you have another question about the dinner? Yes. Um, regarding the stolen cutlery. Earlier today, we established that silver was stolen from your residence prior to the... Okay, indeed. I am aware of whom the culprit is, but I have decided not to press charges. Uh, it is it is curious, then, that you decide to serve steak. Uh, it isn't what one would describe as finger food, after all. I don't know about that, Falcon. With the right attitude, all food can be finger food. There is nothing curious about it, Segri uh, and Dame Catalina are vocal lovers of rare steak. I was merely suiting their heads. Besides, what um, choice did Baron have? Falcon serve vegetables broth like um a cousin cousin peasant do be quiet prosecutor you sound ridiculous S sorry baron do you have another question about the dinner no i don't uh select a statement about the question all right let me check my evidence here photograph letter picture this one boom garden let's go with garden Baron, we saw the murder scene, your garden for ourselves. When was the last time you visited it? Here we go. Baron, Baron when was the last time you ventured into your own garden? Uh, it happens. I have quite serious allergies. I haven't been in my own garden for years. Years, you say? Indeed. That's not right. Baron, I do wish to call you a liar, but it claims, but that claims do not hold up to scrutiny. Oh? And why is that? Because we have hard evidence that you have visited your garden recently. Uh, blabberdash, uh, my word is gold. Show the court the so-called hard evidence that I've been in my own garden. Boom. I found this in your garden. To be specific, it was found inside the fountain basin. Oh, right beside where the murder occurred. A, 
a cigarette garba that uh that um could be belong to uh anybody and prosecutor please shut your mouth i can speak for myself okay so sorry baron that is indeed the remnants of one of my cigars but i must apologize monsieur falcon for i misunderstood your initial question you see prior to the banquet i hadn't visited my own garden in years but naturally after hearing the housemates cry for help on the evening of the murder i rushed outside i was shocked to uh i was shocked and disgusted by what i saw that must have been when i dropped my half smoked cigar into the fountain basin you see falcon there's a perfectly reasonable explanation i would find that believable if the cigar was casually discarded but as it happens the cigar butt was found in the fountain's upper basin a location that could only be accessed with great inconvenience and a little paddling the cigar butt was not dropped in dropped it was deliberately hidden there are many there are there are any number of possibility possible explanations are there because i can only think of one that is that you baron regu deliberately hid your cigar butt to disguise your own illicit activities do i now and what illicit activities would those be you want me to spell it out fine let's put everything on the table you baron baron regu murdered monsieur greenway that is what you were trying to keep hidden directly accusing me of murder how shamelessly brazen this is ludicrous accusation falcon the baron is an upstanding citizen of the highest order your allegation is uh baseless you have no evidence um no uh means motive or opportunity no evidence think harder monsieur rabington every piece of evidence points to the baron ragu as a prime suspect you know what that means the baron uh, certainly had the means his lying claws are sharp as surgeon's blades gutting a frog uh frog's a frog belly would be trivial to him even monsieur rabbin confessed just moments ago that he feared his claws ridiculous i would never threaten a man with violence you want you want a motive the baron had at least ten thousand francs worth of motive by removing a business partner the baron's share of his railway company increased from one third to one half this is preposterous and finally the baron had an opportunity no he crafted the perfect opportunity he arranged a small banquet with a very select number of guests he was aware that they were missing silver and yet he served steak a food item that necessity necessities good cutlery there we go why to bloody the hands of the guests of course then he hired an easily influenced photographer and staged a very specific picture in order to build a perfect alibi for himself photographing the guests in front of the handless clock to make for an easy editing in quite the ingenious plan i it must be said prosecutor are you just going to let this slanderous yarn go uncontested say something object i am um, uh, uh you're so pitiful and useless after executing the murder the baron found himself still holding a single piece of incriminatory evidence his finished cigar he knew that leaving it at the crime scene would raise suspicion but he didn't have time to properly dispose of it so out of desperation he threw it into his fountain out of the sight of his guest and any snooping police i imagine the baron was hoping to implicate uh sir sir greb prater dumas since that would ensure total control over his railway company also dame Catalina was the first to happen upon the crime scene so the baron improvised this is an outrage judge i demand that you disbar this ranting lunatic no there is only one outrage here that is that a man like yourself is able to abuse his wealth and status to frame an innocent girl for murder you're a worgus of the worst kind how dare you grass on the other nerve of for a lying scumbag of a lawyer to accuse a philanthropist like myself of doing something so he i didn't know what that said i am nothing like the fat cat borges i am respectable hard-working capitalist no you're a ruthless man who would slaughter a dear friend just to re reap a few francs you increase your you in this wealth i ought to gut you right here and now like 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 that a damn frog oh no we got him boys we did it we're the greatest attorney ever we're the greatest lawyer to ever exist rabbington could could someone please restrain the baron uh i'm i'm on it yana let's go old man to the concierge with you don't touch me you filthy jack chaw 
I can walk myself. This is quite a turn of events. Does the prosecution have anything to add? Um, I will in a manner of uh, speaking. Well, to be honest, um, uh, no. <laughs> uh, then I shall now confer with the members of the jury to come to a decision. I ask that the animals of the court please be patient in this time. Falcon, that was pretty incredible. Thank you. I just hope it was enough. What do you mean? You just proved Catalina's innocence will get a not guilty verdict for sure. Hmm. Sparrowson, I think you've misunderstood something important about the justice system. What's that? I haven't proved anything. As lawyers, we cannot deal in proofs. It's just not possible. All we can do is organize the evidence and convincingly explain what it suggests. I haven't proved Dame Catalina's innocence. All I have done is demonstrate that there are there is a significant possibility that she is not guilty. I am sure that I I'm not sure I understand the difference. We have reached a decision. In the light of recent events, revelation it is clear that an error of judgment was made on the, within the initial arrest. On that note, we unanimously find the defendant, Dame Catalina Dumas, to be not guilty. We did it, boys. We did it, boys. Not guilty. She's not guilty. We did it. Not guilty. Monsieur Falcon, Petit Sprouse, you did it. Yeah, I suppose uh, we did it, didn't we? We should head back to the office so we can celebrate properly. Boom, we did it, boys. You did it, Falcon. I can't take all the credit. This was a group achievement. I'm so proud of you both. I go get one bottle of wine and three of our last dirty glasses. Boom. You were amazing, Monsieur Falcon. Ah, uh, it was nothing. I very much like uh, the way you pinned the murder on the Baron. That was an act of sheer genius. Well, I didn't pin anything, Sparrows, and, and I just worked up the unveiling the truth uh, given the facts about the case. Monsieur Falcon, there is no need to play coy. The case is over. Oh, no. Don't tell me actually being sincere. I'm completely lost. Oh, wow. I thought the goody-goody thing was an act, but you actually don't know. All right, I'll spell it out for you. No. Boys, I murdered Monsieur Greenway. I saw him in the garden all drunk and vulnerable, and I seized my opportunity. Why? It was nothing personal, just business, you understand? Oh my god. Business. To increase my papa's share in the train company, of course, my papa... Always said that the drunk old frog was the weakest link. Your confession doesn't make any sense. All I found, Baron Ragu's cigar butt hidden in the garden. Oh, I put that there. I expected the police to find it, but I suppose that was putting too much faith in the brains of our Paris finest. But Falcon proved that Monsieur Robin's photograph was edited. It was edited. I wasn't in the picture because I was busy paying a visit to Monsieur's Greenwee in the garden. My papa knew I needed an alibi, so he ordered Monsieur Robineau to paint me over the Baron Ragu and to add his hands on the clock. But that lazy artist didn't manage to finish altering either photograph by trial day. It's a good thing that Monsieur Falcon was so imaginative because that would have gone very badly. Oh my god, she did it, boys. What's with the science? You should both be proud. There aren't many lawyers in the whole of France who could have won a case like this, even for a Borgus kitty like me. I think you should leave. Hmm, fine. So much for the celebrations. Here's a payment for your service straight from my papa's pockets. We oui, adieu, Monsieur Falcon. Um, well, adieu, Monsieur Falcon. Adieu, Petit Sparrowson. Oh my god. Falcon, what do we do now? Falcon? Alright, boys. That was the end of Act 1. It looks like that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, drop a like, comment, and subscribe. We'll play more of this in the next episode. So, yeah. Love each and every single one of you. Hope to see you guys right back here tomorrow. But until then, remember to stay freaky. Holy heck, that was a crazy twist.